Summer Short 2. What happens when someone tries to untransform a transformed PCP practice? Today, I speak with Dr. Scott Kennard. American healthcare entrepreneurs and executives you want to know. Talking. Relentlessly seeking value. Back at the beginning of this year, I was so sad when I had to edit out the clip that follows from the original and extremely popular episode 391 with Dr. Scott Kennard. In the literally probably three minutes that follows in this clip with Dr. Kennard, after I finish my ramblings here, Dr. Kennard introduces the impact that changing the practice model in a PCP practice in Queens, New York, had on the staff and patients alike. Spoiler alert, no way, no how were they going back to the old way of doing things. The before here was a clinic where the waiting room was filled to overflowing out into the hall with patients waiting to be seen. And this included a mix of really sick people who really needed to be seen and also others. And thus, they had amongst a whole host of other bad things going on, the whole issue of suboptimal ER, emergency room visits and urgent care usage, anyone who couldn't wait just headed elsewhere. Also, as it is so many places, care was pretty transactional. A patient who wasn't in clinic had an out-of-sight, out-of-mind relationship with their PCPs, There was no systemic way for the clinical teams to really think about the in-between spaces, as Dr. Amy Scanlon put it, the spaces in between office visits. But then as a result, of course, we wind up dealing with uncontrolled chronic conditions and the failure to prevent preventable disease. We wind up with urgent needs for care in acute situations that had, frankly, no business getting to that stage in the first place. So Dr. Scott Kennard and his team worked on practice transformation, including focusing on operational excellence. I say all that to say, here's Dr. Scott Kennard. We went and did one pilot clinic, which is, I think, the right way to do it. And then the practice manager was recruited by a competing group. They put another person in the clinic, another practice manager, and she immediately came in and thought that her job was to go back and put the old way of doing things in place. And within literally four or five days, they got together and sat down with her and said, look, we understand where you're coming from, but we will never go back. (laughs) We are not going back to that old system. We are going to do things in this new way because it it makes our lives and we work together so much better and we enjoy being together. And we're seeing we like not having 30 people waiting to get here at work. We like people getting having a waiting room be close to empty as we just have one or two of the next people coming in. And we will never go back to that old system. And and to her credit, she's like, "Okay, cool. Let me understand this. And she's now one of the strongest leaders in that organization for this transformation. So the PCPs, it was like mutiny on the bounty. They were like, no way, no how are we going back? Oh, it was the entire team. The receptionist, the telephone operator, the MAs, they have a patient navigation navigator, which is another part of the equation we haven't talked about that's really important. And so the whole team said no. Listen to the full episode 391 to learn more about Dr. Scott Kennard and his team's approach to practice transformation. But in the meantime, Dr. Peter Watson captured a few learnings from the original episode really nicely on LinkedIn. So let me quote him here. And here's the key lessons. Number one, proactive advanced primary care is a powerful, powerful vehicle for tertiary quaternary prevention to make health happen for patients in the community. Number two, learning, although two-sided risk slash prospective capitation makes the most sense to grow primary care intervention, fee-for-service in the short term can still creatively sustain some aspects of primary care. Number three, learning, primary care physicians are trying to do the right thing daily, but often are not supported to make the health impact that they are trying to achieve. And number four, the term fiduciary in healthcare is a tricky concept. Physician leadership in healthcare organizations matters. Yeah, for sure. Dr. Watson has some other really great posts on on the topics of value-based care and primary care. I would highly recommend following him on LinkedIn, link in the show notes. Should you continue to be interested in this topic of transformational primary care, additional shows on transforming primary care, including Bright Spots and Challenges, are the show with Eric Gallagher. That's 405 
As aforementioned, the show with Dr. Amy Scanlon. Also check out the upcoming show with Larry Bauer, which will be approximately episode 409, should I get my act together. Oh, and Dr. Vivek Garg, episode 407, who, by the way, is coming up in next week's Summer Short, talking about the common rebuke of comprehensive primary care, which is that it diminishes patient access because PCP patient panel sizes tend to be smaller in comprehensive primary care models. Since the original show with Dr. Scott Kennard aired, his new book, Next Door, came out. Link in the show notes. I'm going to say that this book is relevant. It's written for employers, but still relevant here because employers have a terrible track record for helping, i.e., paying for healthcare in a way that enables PCPs who want to do comprehensive primary care to actually do comprehensive primary care. When an employer lets the status quo prevail, employees get fragmented care provided by PCPs struggling under the weight of brutal administrative burden and often nasty and counterproductive incentives. My name is Stacey Richter. This podcast is sponsored by Aventria Health Group.